So this article is posted on IGN. It's some big layoffs related to uh, the game called Redfall. So it says here Microsoft closes Redfall developer Arcane Austin, Hi-Fi Rush developer Tango Gameworks, and more in devastating cuts at Bethesda. Microsoft has closed a number of Bethesda studios including Redfall maker Arcane Austin, Hi-Fi Rush, and the Evil Within developer Tango Gameworks and more in devastating cuts at Bethesda, IGN can confirm. Alpha Dog Games, maker of mobile game Mighty Doom, will also close. Roundhouse Studios will be absorbed by the Elder Scrolls online developer ZeniMax Online Studios. Microsoft, currently valued at over $3 trillion, did not say how many staff will lose their jobs, but significant layoffs are inevitable. IGN has asked Bethesda for comment. Microsoft declined to expand further when contacted by IGN. On Redfall, the disastrous vampire co-op game will now not receive promised updates, including an offline mode and new character DLC, as Microsoft has ended all development on the game. Microsoft said Redfall will remain online to play and it will provide a make-good offer for those who bought the Hero DLC. So here's the post by Arcane Studios on Twitter. Today it was announced that Arcane Austin will close and development will not continue on Redfall. To everyone that has supported the work from our Austin studio over the years, thank you. Thank you for spending time in our worlds and making them your own. Arcane Line will continue their focus on immersive experiences where they are hard at work on their upcoming project. Redfall players who purchased the Hero Pass as part of the Premium Bite Back Edition or the Premium Bite Back Upgrade will be eligible to receive the value of the upgrade. While there will be no further updates, Redfall's servers will remain online for players to enjoy. Arcane Lion, which is working on Marvel's Blade, survives the cull, as does Bethesda Game Studios, Fallout, The Elder Scrolls, Starfield and Machine Games, Indiana Jones and the Great Circle. Doom developer id Software is also unaffected. This reprioritization of titles and resources means a few teams will be realigned to others and that some of our colleagues will be leaving us. Today I'm sharing changes we are making to our Bethesda and Zenimax teams. These changes are grounded in prioritizing high-impact titles, and further investing in Bethesda's portfolio of blockbuster games and beloved worlds, which you have nurtured over many decades. To double down on these franchises and invest to build new ones requires us to look across the business to identify the opportunities that are best positioned for success. So these changes are going to affect these studios, Arcane Austin, Alpha Dog Studios, Tango Gameworks, and Roundhouse Games. With this consolidation of our Bethesda Studio teams so that we can invest more deeply in our portfolio of games and new IP, a small number of roles across select Bethesda publishing and corporate teams will also be eliminated. Those whose roles will be impacted will be notified today and we ask that you please treat your departing colleagues with respect and compassion. We will provide our full support to those who are impacted in today's notification and through their transitions, including severance benefits informed by local laws. These changes are not a reflection of the creativity and skill of the talented individuals at these teams, or the risks they took to try new things. I acknowledge that these changes are also disruptive to the various support teams across ZeniMax and Bethesda that bring our games to market. We are making these tough decisions to create capacity to increase investment in other parts of our portfolio and focus on our priority games. Bethesda remains one of the key pillars of Xbox with a strong portfolio of amazing games and thriving communities. As we look to the future, there is an impressive lineup of games on the horizon. In 2024 alone, we have Starfield Shattered Space, followed 76 Skyline Valley, Indiana Jones and the Great Circle, and The Elder Scrolls Online's Golden Road. 
as we align our plans and resources to best set ourselves up for the success in this complex and changing industry, our teams across Arcane Alliance, Bethesda Game Studios, id Software, Machine Games, Zenimax Online Studios, and the Bethesda Publishing and Corporate Teams will be well positioned to build new IP, explore new game concepts, and expand on our existing franchises. Microsoft's announcement of the cuts at Bethesda come over three months after the company announced plans to cut 1,900 staff from its video game workforce and amid a boom time for Bethesda's Fallout series following the breakout hit Prime Video TV show. The closure of Tango Gameworks hits just over a year after the launch of Hi-Fi Rush, what many consider to be one of the best Xbox games in recent years. Tweeting in April 2023, Aaron Greenberg, VP of Xbox Games Marketing at Microsoft, addressed concerns that Hi-Fi Rush had failed to meet sales targets, calling the game a breakout hit for us and our players in all key measurements and expectations. Greenberg continued, We couldn't be happier with what the team at Tango Gameworks delivered with this surprise release. Hi-Fi Rush launched on PS5 as part of Microsoft's new multi-platform push in March. And here's the tweet from Tango Gameworks. Today it was announced that Tango Gameworks will close. Thank you to everyone that explored the worlds we created. Hi-Fi Rush, along with Tango's previous titles, will remain available and playable everywhere they are today. Layoffs are sweeping the video game industry, with a number of high-profile studios cutting staff or shutting down. In stark contrast to a year of blockbuster video game hits, one of the biggest ongoing industry trends in 2023 was the prevalence of mass layoffs, and they have continued into 2024. With actual figures are difficult to obtain, estimates suggest the number of workers laid off in games last year approached or exceeded 10,000. A recent GDC survey of developers suggests one-third of all game developers were impacted by layoffs last year, either directly or by witnessing them happen at their company. Clearly things changed. At the time of this article's publication, the Redfall Bite Back Edition was still available to buy. Bethesda has now set up a website to handle Redfall credit, although the process has yet to be made available. We are working to finalize details for the Redfall credit program. A statement published on the website reads, This article will be updated as new information becomes available shortly. Even IGN gave this game a rating 4 out of 10. It was pretty bad. They're saying that the game launched with a bunch of issues like having bland missions, unengaging combat, poor AI enemies, struggling performance, myriad bugs, and an always online requirement, and more. It also took them 5 months for the Xbox Series X version to get 60 frames per second support, and Arcane upset fans again the following month when its third patch was headlined by a new sniper rifle instead of highly requested features like an offline mode, and this was the last fans heard. And here are the stats of Redfall. So it seems like this game did not capture a big enough audience on a consistent basis to merit more funding for DLC. So this game is done. This situation reminds me of what happened to the game called The Darkness 2. Back in 2012, they expected around 1 million sales, but they only got 540,000, and because of this, they cancelled any future DLC. But the option for downloadable content is still on the main menu, and it's not removed. 